Article 2, appropriate $32,400,000 for con contract administration and construction of a new police headquarters. Good evening. My name is Jeff McElravey. I'm a principal with Tecton Architects, the firm working on the design of your new police headquarters building. During this presentation, I would like to bring you up to date on the temporary police facility project at 173 Bedford Street and to provide updates on the status of the police headquarters design, the integrated design process, the project timeline, and the overall project budget. First, for the update on the temporary facility. On January 22nd of this year, the town of Lexington received bids on budget at $351,000 for the renovations necessary to support police operations at 173 Bedford Street, while the demolition and new construction are conducted at the existing police station site on Massachusetts Avenue. The con construction contract was enacted in the middle of February for its anticipated four month construction duration. At just shy of the three quarter completion point of construction on May 6th, the headquarters design drawings are scheduled for completion. Construction will continue until mid June, leaving one month to close out the project and wrap up punch list items, and another month for the police to set up equipment and move in in prior to beginning operations at 173 Bedford Street in mid-August. Now let's take a look at the design status of the headquarters project. This is a view of the overall campus with the Cary Memorial Building in the middle, the town offices to the left, and the new police station to the right. The overall campus parking count has been reduced by six spaces. Although at the time of this recording, ideas are under evaluation to restore up to three of those spaces. The area of Fletcher Field has been increased by 9,200 square feet, providing more space for activities like the farmer's market or the ice rink. Zooming in a bit further to just the police headquarters portion of the site, we can see the new main entrance located just above the round paved forecourt in the center of the image adjacent to Massachusetts Avenue. To the left, facing the Circle Drive in front of Cary, is a police officer memorial at the location of the existing main entrance to the current police station. The driveway to the right of the station provides access for visitors and police cruisers to the parking alongside the building. Accessible spaces are located immediately adjacent to the forecourt at the public entry. The driveway continues around the back of the station to provide access to the indoor cruiser parking and to the maintenance base in the upper left corner of the new station. Now let's take a brief tour of the new station. On the screen now, you can see the first floor plan, which is the entrance level on the left, and the second floor plan on the right. As we move along in the tour, I will highlight the various areas so you can better see the area I'm discussing. Starting in the lower right corner of the first floor plan, we will enter into the public lobby, which has been designed to provide a welcoming environment and serve as a connection to the community. This area was expanded since schematic design as a result of feedback from the community conversation on policing. Flanking the vestibule are two accessible gender neutral restrooms. Looking directly ahead of you, you will see the main desk, which serves as the primary point of interaction with members of the public seeking department services. As you head into the lobby, you can see a meeting room on your right. If there's a topic you need to discuss with an officer, this provides a place where you can speak comfortably and confidentially. Other activities like Facebook marketplace transactions can occur here as well. If you look to the left, you'll note some banquette seating flanking a passage further into the lobby. Beyond that, you'll see the traffic record service window where you can pick up copies of any traffic reports. And finally, you'll find yourself looking towards the entrance to the community training room. This room can host meetings of community groups, as well as provide a location for officer training. Two additional accessible gender neutral restrooms are available just outside the community room entrance. Moving back to the main desk of the department, you'll note the highlighted dispatch area. This is where all electronic communication between officers and the public is coordinated. Dispatchers receive calls for service, then radio the appropriate police resources to respond. 
The officer in charge is a workspace sandwiched between the main desk and the dispatch stations to maintain an awareness of activity and to be available to su support desk officers or dispatchers. You may have also noted that a room has been highlighted on the second floor as well. This room contains the servers and equipment that support the dispatch communications, but also provides protected space for the town servers. Remember when we were in the lobby and spoke about traffic records? That room is highlighted now. This is one of two rooms that house essential records for the police department, but we'll get to the second room later on in the tour. The area highlighted now is the detainee processing and holding area for the department. Detainees are brought into the station via cruisers, which enter at the top of this area through the vehicle garage into a sally port. This term simply refers to a secure, controlled entryway. Directly accessible from the sally port is the processing area, which includes a booking station, interview rooms, and if needed, detention facilities. It should be noted that the new station provides 50% less cells than the existing station. Safety for officer and detainee is the key driving force behind the design of these areas. Since we've already mentioned the vehicle garage as an access path to the sally port, let's visit that area next. The garage provides weather protected parking for nine police fleet vehicles with close access to patrol supplies. The garage will be electric vehicle ready. To the left of the parking garage are two vehicle maintenance bays. Routine maintenance and fit out of cruisers can be performed here, and the bays can also be used to conduct investigations when a vehicle is involved in a crime. The heaviest foot traffic in and out of the station is from the patrol officers. These officers enter the station at the beginning of shift via a staff entrance on the right side of the building adjacent to the stair. During a shift, the officers may also enter from the vehicle garage. Either way, from here, the officers have access to the report preparation room, located adjacent to dispatch, where they can complete paperwork. Opposite the hall from report preparation are storage spaces for essential equipment and supplies. If we proceed up the stair by the staff entry, we enter the patrol area of the station on the upper floor. The shift sergeants have workstations just adjacent to the stair, and below that is a combination break room and patrol briefing room, so officers can be up to speed on events they may face throughout their shift. Running left to right across the top of the upper floor plan are the staff locker rooms for changing before and after shift or for adjusting wardrobe to changing weather conditions throughout a shift. Officers also have access to a fitness room Gender neutral facilities are also provided in this area. The administrative area of the station is in the lower right corner of the upper floor plan. The chief, captains, and administrative assistant have offices that are located adjacent to both patrol and detective areas and that are accessible to all of the staff. Glass partitions build on the transparency between administration and officer. In the core of the station is an office to support the department in, man in maintaining accreditation by consistently updating policies and procedures to the latest best practices. Also adjacent to the administrative area is the detective bureau. These officers conduct the longer term complex investigations of the agency. They also maintain and secure the evidentiary material investigators collect and process. If you remember earlier on, I mentioned another area of the station where records are maintained. This office is for criminal records and is conveniently located near the detectives, just above the stair on the left side of the plan. Equity and inclusivity were both topics identified in the community conversation. And as a result, traditional designated gendered restrooms have been replaced or supplemented with gender neutral individual restrooms throughout the building. Additional staff resources, such as private phone rooms and health rooms have been added. A new space for de-escalation training is now included in the plan upstairs. The community conversation also identified the need to include resources for social and mental health workers to assist officers. So a suite of offices is now included for those staff resources. Overall, you can see by the currently highlighted areas on the plans, that a significant portion of the overall building was influenced 
in one way or another by the comments received during the conversation on policing. Now that you've had a tour of the inside of the building, it's time, a, time to take a look at the exterior. The view before you is the front of the building facing Massachusetts Avenue. You can just see the Cary Memorial Building off to the left of the image with the brick cladding and white panel and trim details that served as inspiration for the new station. The main entrance is easily identifiable, but scaled so as not to compete with the entry to carry. Please note the police signage high up on the gable, which is a carryover of a bit of history from the existing station. As we head up the driveway, we get our first look at the elevation facing Fletcher Field. The brownstone base and brick detailing reflect some of the character of the Cary Memorial Building. One last look back over the shoulder as we near the northwest corner of Fletcher Field shows us the parking garage exit. Many of the pitched roof masses that make up the design composition are scaled to reflect the existing police station and its overall part in the campus composition. The view from the bicycle path looks at the vehicle garage with slit windows to allow a bit of natural light into the garage. Up above is a shed dormer, which allows natural light into the locker rooms. The windows are high up to protect privacy, but will, will reduce reliance on artificial lighting. Finally, we swing around behind the Cary Memorial Building. From here, you can see the vehicle maintenance bay doors and a service court with dumpsters and the emergency generator. This building is all electric, so the generator is appropriately sized to support that load. Beyond, you can see the windows to the social and mental health services offices and to the detec detective bureau. Now let's take a quick virtual tour around the station and into the lobby. As we enter the lobby doors, we can see the main desk straight up ahead with the public meeting room to the right and the traffic records to the left. Further down the lobby to the left is the community training room. Next, we will discuss how this design performs against the integrated design process adopted by the town of Lexington. This is the first project to progress through this process, and it has been a learning, learning experience for all involved. There are four primary goals identified in, in the integrated design process. The first is the building use of energy. This is determined by building a computerized energy model to test the thermal, thermal envelope and the energy demands. Lots of data points are evaluated, but for clarity, we are using the EUI, or Energy Utilization Intensity. Think of it like your golf score. The lower your score, the better your energy performance. The lead baseline is for an EUI of 60. The ASHRAE 90.1-2013 baseline is 53. This building design results in an EUI of 40. Remember, lower is better. When solar PV panels are added, this building could achieve an EUI of zero. Next, we measure the building against the LEED checklist, which has been enhanced with a number of required credits defined by the town of Lexington. The goal for this design was an equivalence of silver, which requires from 50 to 59 points. The design is currently tracking with 66 points, right in the required range from 60 to 79 points, necessary to achieve gold, and it has achieved all of the Lexington-defined credits. Red list compliance eliminates particularly harmful substances from building materials, or the processes used to manufacture building materials. For this first foray into the red list compliance, the town of Lexington defined a goal of reducing or eliminating red list materials from four construction divisions that have the closest contact with building users. As of the recording of this presentation, red list elements have been removed from 97% of the materials in those four divisions, 
and the team is working to illuminate the remaining 3% as well. Finally, the integrative design process seeks to achieve net zero energy usage. The roof of the building is already solar ready with switchgear, conduit, and infrastructure so the town can acquire PV panels through a provider, as has been done on past Lexington projects. The building site also has the provisions for installation of solar canopies through, through provision of switchgear, duct banks, and infrastructure. <coughs> And the design team is evaluating options for canopies that will fit the historic character of the campus. Solar integration may take place as a later project once the appropriate solutions are identified. Now let's take a look at the schedule moving forward and the overall project budget. In February of this year, the design development phase of document production was completed. An authorization was provided to continue into the construction documents phase which is the final step before bidding the project. As of the beginning of this month, construction documents are now 50% complete. In May, the construction documents will be completed prior to the June 8th ballot vote for the project. Shortly after, the project will proceed into a six-week bidding period, with bids received late in July, just after completion of the temporary police facility. The construction contract will be awarded by early August and construction mobilization will begin in mid-August. The overall construction period is anticipated to be 18 months. On this slide is a timeline of the project budget. Some may recall that the project was initiated with a feasibility study of both fire and police facilities six years ago in November of 2016. The space needs assessment which establishes the initial design area was prepared in January of 2017, followed by a conceptual design that had three floors and maintained portions of the existing building. At the annual town meeting of 2018, design fees were authorized based on a projected $25.4 million project. Several design options were studied, but ultimately an option which maintained portions of the existing facade was selected for further development. The scope of the project increased in spring of 2019 with the inclusion of additional program areas, including space for the town IT service. Shortly thereafter, the first integrated design meeting was held and the team was introduced to the sustainability standards discussed on a previous slide. Then in December of 2019, the schematic design was presented to the select board. Cost and scope increases had raised the budget from 25.4 million to 28.6 million. The selected select board directed the architect to find value engineering solutions to bring the cost down. An earlier design concept was revisited, which involved a complete demolition of the existing building, resulting in all new construction. Freed from the constraints of the existing building, the design team was able to produce a more efficient floor plan and to create a more accessible entry that extends the municipal campus to include Butcher Field. This solution was projected at 26,625 square feet and a budget of 25.4 million. After further development of the design, a schematic solution of 30,000 square feet was presented to the select board at a budget of 25.4 million. Shortly thereafter, the project was paused. The pandemic and other national social issues deserved a community conversation on policing in the town of Lexington. After just over a year, the design team was re-engaged and asked to address the comments on policing that were the result of community input. Floor plans were revised and nearly 4,000 square feet of space was added to address the input of the community. At that time, the design team was aware of significant escalation in the construction market from supply chain disruptions and shortages as a result of the global pandemic, but could not yet predict the overall impact to the project. A rough projection suggested the budget could be in the range of 33.2 million. Four months later, in February of 2022, based on the results of a construction cost estimate, the true impact was demonstrated to be an increase in the budget up to $34.6 million. The design team and the Permanent Building Committee have been engaged since then in a round of value engineering efforts to manage the cost. 
The police headquarters project, including the temporary facility and its total project budget of $35,181,630 has previously been supported by town meeting on three occasions with prior funding totaling $2,797,622. Article two requests the balance of funding necessary of $32,400,000 to meet the current total project budget for the police headquarters project. 